Welcome back. You're watching BT Vancouver. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday morning. Well, new Tory leader Aaron O'Toole says the Conservative Party welcomes Canadians regardless of gender identity or sexual orientation. Let's bring in our Ottawa reporter, Xiao Li Li, who has been covering this story for us all week. Good morning, Xiao. Nice to see you. Good morning, Mary. So let's talk about the tone that O'Toole is setting. How is he, you know, trying to come across? Well, I mean, it was a very late night for him Sunday, as I'm sure you're aware, Mary. But right as soon as he got on the stage for his victory speech at around 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning, he started talking about this is an inclusive Canadian Conservative Party. If you're a Canadian who hasn't felt welcome here in the past, then no more. This is your home as well. You're part of the Canadian and Conservative family. He made that point again on Tuesday morning, emphasizing he doesn't care what your ethnic background is, what your religion is. If you hold conservative values, you should be a conservative voter. And I mean, it's really hard to say how that may play. It looks like he's very much trying to reintroduce himself to Canada and make a real break uh, from this, uh, the Andrew Scheer years. Of course, you'll recall that Andrew Scheer sometimes had trouble uh, reconciling some of the social conservative views in the party with what some of the views of broader Canadians may be, and at times he was dogged with this accusation that he was just Stephen Harper light or Diet Harper, and it looks like Aaron O'Toole is really trying to make a clean break and avoid falling into that pitfall. Mm -hmm. And it's still very early, so it's kind of hard to form an opinion about him just yet. Uh, with Parliament Pro Road, what will O'Toole be doing in the short term? So far, he's, as I said, trying to put everything that happened in the leadership race behind him. Of course, there wasn't a great deal of ugly politicking, but there was a little bit that peeked through. And with so much attention on the leadership race because of, I mean, the expectation that the leader of the Conservative Party could be a prime minister in waiting, he'll want to get that taste out of Canadians' mouths. You'll recall that Derek Sloan, one of the candidates at one point, accused Dr. Theresa Tam of working for China, not Canada. And and Peter McKay at one point accused Aaron O'Toole of being soft on trans issues, referring to a bathroom bill that he voted on in 2012. But it's clear O'Toole is trying to tell Canadians, you know, that part of everything is over. That was the leadership race. That's in the past. We're not dealing with that anymore. Here's my position on these things, and we're going to move forward on these. These guys didn't win. I won, and this is what we're going for. So, as I said before, O'Toole's really trying to reintroduce himself to Canadians, which is a bit strange. He's been making a big deal of, hi, I'm Aaron O'Toole. You may not have heard of me, but of course we have. He was former Veterans Affairs Minister under Stephen Harper, and he ran in the 2015 leadership race that uh, Andrew Scheer eventually won. Oh, right. I do remember that. Seems like a lifetime ago. Uh, let's talk about the runners up. Peter McKay, he was widely known to be the front runner, and Leslie Lewis had a surge of uh, support towards the end of that race. Yeah, absolutely. And in the end, it looked like, how do I phrase this? There was an expectation that if Peter McKay couldn't win on the first ballot, that it would end up being close and he wouldn't win in the end. And that is indeed what happened. Uh, Peter McKay sometimes perhaps struggled to define himself in the aftermath of his long uh, previous political career. He, at one point during the campaign, Aaron O'Toole's uh, team accused the Peter McKay team of stealing campaign data from him. So it's entirely possible that we could see Peter McKay take a quiet exit from politics at this point, taking some time to say, hey, you know what, I'm I'm going to take some time to myself and reevaluate where my career is going. Uh, Derek Sloan, of course, lost on the first ballot. He really tried to appeal to that socially conservative vote, but struggled to get out of the gate, falling at the first hurdle. He is, of course, still the MP for Hastings, Lennox, and Addington, so he'll be around, but, I mean, losing on that first ballot will really hurt his credibility. The real surprise here was, of course, Leslyn Lewis. Uh, she's a relative political newcomer. She ran in 2015 losing, uh, coming in second in her riding in Toronto. She's a Toronto human rights attorney, and she took a more nuanced approach to social conservative issues, saying things like, well, she wouldn't support a conversion therapy ban, but then pointed to her record as an attorney defending LGBTQ couples in court. So she had a very strong showing. It would be very surprising uh, as a fresh face, you know, political parties always trying to get new blood in there. It would be very surprising if you didn't see her hanging around the party in some sort of advisory role in the future. All right, and yeah, O'Toole would be smart to keep her around. All right, Shao, we're out of time. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. All right, 721.